Hey. We play it in reverse. <laughs> well, you have to introduce me. <laughs> oh, the one of those days, man. Everybody, 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 world, 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 what's up out there, world? It's your boy Wild Carl Martin in the building. You know who that guy is. What's good? That's good. IW Sports, that nigga in the house. IW Sports, got that nigga right there, Mel. Of course, me, Wild Carl Martin. Hey, everybody, thank you for tuning in to another episode of IOW Sports. Right, right. Um, Before we get into week 14 reviews and picks for week 15 and what we like, what we hate and get some shit off our chest. Let's get the preliminaries out of the way. Right, right. All right. Go over to www.ioftenwonder19.com and that's where you will find all of IOW Sports material as well as our sister network company, I Often Wonder Podcast. Right, right. You can go and find out all of our platforms that we are affiliated with you can also go check out our patreon scroll down you can donate right right okay and you can also go find where you can get the merch Merch. always rocking minds Uh, side note we got iw on sports sweatshirt too yes we do i'm at the cop one for for myself for christmas once i get my money right you know i'm I'm, I'm, get your cash right bro I'm broke as hell. <laughs> I don't know how it is. I'm, I'm gonna get me one too. Yeah, but anyway, like I said, thank you for joining us. Um, we are gonna keep the energy high, and we talking sports, um, right? Right. Even though we in the midst of football, if you, some other sports get dropped in, it's because we're a sports show. Right. Anyway, right. 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 Everybody, it's one of your favorite segments that we about to jump it off with. What you like? What you hate? Big bro. Week fourteen, we get into the nitty gritty of the NFL, baby. What you like, bro? You know what? So I got my I just time I took notes because there's so much stuff I wanted to talk about. I know I've I been said, taking more, more said, notes. Let me, let me take some stuff. notes, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's so much stuff going on. Yeah, yeah. Um I did like I like um the Eagles, how they look. Okay. You know, I like how they looked. Um it's a funny thing, I, I didn't want to leave with this because there's some stuff I want to bring up about them later on. But okay. overall, I do like the way Jalen Hurts look. Yeah. Um, they didn't luck, ask him to do too much. Right. You know, they kind of played to his strengths. Um, the running game looked good. Sanders mm-hmm. had a cook, you know, broke off a couple of good runs. Yeah, that big you long know, run was right. beneficial big time. Right. Do you know, um, shoot, but what's up with uh, Lutz missing the field goal? That's like a 22 yard field goal. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna speak on that and 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 what I hate, but it's funny you bring that up. But yeah, I'm gonna speak on that too. <laughs> right, right. I like that. Um, I like the way Buffalo look. Buffalo yeah, they look, look good. good. Buffalo, look Buffalo, good. Buffalo, Buffalo look like they peaking at the right time. Now I'm gonna mm-hmm. say this though: the way this season been going. I'm kind of scared to speak on things because you see one 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 or two weeks we'll say something and then it trends yeah. the opposite way. <laughs> the opposite way. That's how the season been. Same year. thing about Tennessee. I was like, Tennessee looks scary, and right. then they fell flat against. Um, was it Minnesota? Was it, was it Minnesota? Uh, no, they fell flat against. Uh, I can't remember. Dang, I, I, I remember the games came in who they played because I was saying the same thing. I was like, what happened? Yeah, God, I'm gonna have to pull it up. No, I'm, I'm about to look at it. Uh, in turn. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, hey, we'll, we'll keep it moving because, uh, you know, I, I'm like you. I, I was like, man, they look good. And then all of a sudden, they just just disappeared. Right, right. Um, um, but, yeah. They you know. the game. Yeah. But, it, but it, you know, why are you looking for that? But, yeah, I like, but I do, I do look like they're peaking pretty good, you know. Um, Josh Allen, looked, Cleveland, 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 right? Yeah. Josh Allen looked pretty decent, you know, a couple fumbles here and there, but he looked good. Um, Diggs had a good game. Hey, Diggs was over there tearing up Pittsburgh. Diggs I'm just was like, looking at the game. I'm like, is somebody gonna put a hat on this yeah. guy or not? What's going on? You know, we know Diggs looked like uh, 
one of those like Pittsburgh uh, receivers. You know how Pittsburgh like he uh, Juju uh, like Juju uh, or somebody like that. You know Ben we throw to Juju and Juju had one of those games. That's how Diggs was looking against them. He looked unstoppable. Yeah, he looked like oh, pff, I ain't gonna stop him. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna double him or something. Do something. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like getting this motherfucker's way. Right. Like, Knock him down. Jam him. Do something. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Grip <laughs> him. Right. Touch him. Touch him. <laughs> Shoot, just sling his face mask. To get the penalty. Just, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> just get his head out the game. Do something. You know what I'm saying? Just change the no direction. Answer, you got to change, change his, uh, you know, take his confidence or something. Yeah, slow you know, him down. Bro. Slow him slow down. Him. Do something, man. Pittsburgh look pedestrian. Um, you, I'm a. But it, I, I, I know what you. I, I think I know what you're gonna say. But let me say this: They've been doing the same thing all year. Yeah, it's have. just that it's now it's just a matter of time that those mistakes and those same thing they've been doing is catching, catching up, up to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They never, yeah, right. they never I fix. Say that. I figured <laughs> that. They never fix the things they need to fix throughout the season. And I think winning spoiled them. I think by them winning and being able to pull it off, they said, "Well, we're we good." And not to say Tomlin didn't, Tomlin didn't coach them. I'm talking about the players. See, there's a difference. See, the players in their mind might have been like, "Yeah, we heard you saying, but we yeah, win." Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But we win it, so we can't hey. be doing something right. You know, sometimes you get complacent. I'm not gonna put it on time, man. I will say this. Yeah, I, uh, go ahead. You can't, you can't coach people to catch the ball. Well, you can, but you can't make them. And catch Ebron the ball. dropped a number pass. Look, like I said, he drops one a game. It wasn't just Ebron. It was uh, Johnson. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, Johnson like, dropped two or three. three. But I'm just saying, I just bring up Ebron again. He all, oh, like yeah, I said yeah, before, yeah. he Come always on, at least drop one pass a game. Hey, he always. likes butter. On, he likes butter on his popcorn. Bro. Right. He might well be eating before the game. We need to cut that out. <laughs> Look, when you lead the league in drops as a team, right? Not just it's not just one person on that team, right? I don't care what your record is. Mm-hmm. When it comes down to the nitty gritty, which what the NFL is getting to at this time right. of year, right? It's not beneficial at all. At all. Period. What you hate, big bro? I hated the I hated the Cleveland one again. Well, they didn't win. I hate that Cleveland look good again. Let me say. Oh, that. I got you. I hate they look good again because hey, now that was, a, that was a hell of a game. Bro. That was a good game. It was an entertaining game. It was an entertaining, entertaining game. as hell. You know, and like especially when you have a dog in a fight. Those games are entertaining unless you have a dog in a fight. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I'm gonna touch on Cleveland later, so I ain't gonna take too much. And I hate the way KC look. They look good. Then they look bad. They look good. They look bad. You know what I'm saying? That's going up and down you know the whole time. And here's the thing. I was watching. So, you know, now that we do the sports cast, I watch for certain things. I was yeah, watching yeah, yeah. Mahomes. He took a few sacks he shouldn't have took. And I think the way he play. Bro, see, that 30-yard sack had me mad. As- Why did he want so far back? I'm like, bro, what you doing? See, it's, it's the Get mentality. The it's the mentality of because I have I can use my feet so many times to get me out of this, I'm going to keep trying to use my feet. When you just sometimes it's just keep it simple. Just throw it away. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to make a play. Every single Every down, you know, no. sometimes it's no. beneficial to throw it away. You got to let your defense, you know, do their job, get back on the next series, you know, what I'm saying, and march on down the field because you I'm, put I'm yourself a, 30 I'm yards a, I'm back. A, I'm gonna I'm piggyback off you when you finish the okay. statement. About you, you mark it, you, you, you throw yourself 30 yards back, you know, all right? Yeah, so now you're losing down, you lost it down, you dug yourself in a, a deeper hole mm-hmm. versus. If you just thrown it away, whether you want to go for it on fourth or whatever, but once you throw it away, your kicker is further up the field. He can pin your he can pin the person um, back down, you know, in their own territory. So that's still a defensive move. That's still another move that you can use for your advantage, you yeah. know. But when you take a sack like that, now they're closer for them to march mm-hmm. down the field. So you got to yeah. – I, I think yeah, some right. of those things as champions, mm-hmm. they got to start tweaking the little things. They're still a good team. Okay, I'm not taking up from them, but you know, every time you go for another championship, you gotta keep tweaking things. Keep yeah. tweaking things. But go ahead, go. I'm gonna let you go. Now, now, just to piggyback off mm-hmm. on, on what you hate about the Chiefs, um, and this is not me being a fan of the Chiefs, as y'all know, I, I love the Chiefs, but being a fan of the Chiefs, I'm gonna scrutinize them, right, more than any other team because that's my team. Now, of course, the side. 
was just, I'm like, what is that, Pat? That didn't look like MVP Patrick Mahomes. That didn't look like anything that resembled the Patrick Mahomes that has been in the league at all. Right. Um, you can debate whether the first interception was on him, the, the uh, Van Ginkle or whatever his name is from Miami fell down. Right, right. Got up at the right opportune time, tipped it, and and they got a, a, a pick. You can debate that. I personally think that I didn't like the play call, but, mm-hmm. you know, as a screen – and you got a defender right there, whether he's on the ground or not. He was up, and he tipped the ball. So that's debatable. Right. Um, the second interception, the sec, the third, the second and third interceptions. I'm just like, what? <laughs> what the is going on? Like, you have two turnovers. You have two interceptions by Pat, who who's normally great at taking care of the ball. And right. this is first quarter, and you're down ten. Now, as a fan, I wasn't worried about the Chiefs. I'm just like, what's going on? Like, are you guys, did y'all not make it to Miami? Did y'all party? <laughs> did y'all got COVID? What, what's, what's going, going on? on? Now, here, here, here's my thing about the Chiefs. Right. Because I'm a fan, I'm going to scrutinize them heavy. I feel like they, they, they be going through the motions. And I feel like they're, they're so – confident in their abilities that they can always come back and be in the game no matter what. Right, that right. They just kind of was going through the motions. I agree. And the problem with that is, is that yeah, you 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 defending Super Bowl champs, so all games that they played this year and if you look at their, their record, their strength of schedule wasn't great. They probably had one of the easiest schedules mm-hmm. in the league, but you're going to get the the top shot from every team because right. you are the defending champions. That's so right. no matter what your strength of schedule is, every game's a dog fight because people want to take a shot at the champ, that's, period. That's correct. And I feel like I don't know if it's coaching, I don't know if it's the players, but just overall, all year, it's been a little – I know people, look, don't take this out of context. You're <laughs> like, oh, Chiefs are 12 and 1. But you got to understand, for me, who I'm 33, mm-hmm. and the Chiefs been sucking all my life, so we finally get a Super Bowl victory. Right. My expectations are on a different level now. Mm-hmm. I'm expecting you to always perform like a champion now. Right. That's my expectation. That's how it should be, though. Yeah. So now that, now that they got into this level, I'm not seeing Super Bowl ex- – I'm not seeing Super Bowl performance every week. Right. Right. Maybe I'm expecting too much. I don't care. No, but no, that, but I, here's my thing. Here's my thing. <laughs> if you if you win, and that should be that's with anything. Yeah. If you once you achieve a certain pinnacle, once you achieve a certain reach a certain pinnacle, achieve a certain level, there's no way you should be expecting anything under that. No. At the very at the I'm, very least, you I expect won't. the same level of 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 commitment. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But or as a competitor, yeah. you always want to. Exceed or uh, expect yeah. higher. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So they already won the Super Bowl. So why should I settle for playoffs? Uh, it, I won't. You know what <laughs> I'm saying? Just me as a fan of right. that team. I mean, I'm a Lions fan. Yeah, yeah. I, so, your expectations ain't so too my high. expectations ain't too high. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? However, <laughs> right. So however, though, if they say say next year they get a good coach, they go on a run, they make it to the NFC Championship. Yeah. So next year, I'm not gonna just settle for playoffs. It's like you yeah. at least make that again. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because now you achieved a certain level, you have to repeat that. And I think I think what you're saying, you know, if it, it's not, the, it's very seldom teams go back to back, especially in football. Yeah. It's even more it's rare they win three in a row. Yeah. So, but at the same time, you want them to be competitive. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I, I just, I just think they pick and choose when they, they want to turn it on. Right. And my thing is, is that when you're getting at this point of the season, especially when you get to playoffs, mm-hmm. ain't no turning it on when you want to. You either got it or you don't. You gotta hit that they, gas and keep it and keep keep it down until hey, the, until the last zeros hit the um, board. That's how it hey, is. That moment that the Chiefs start letting up is gonna be the day that a team's gonna put them out. Right. Play. I don't care. We playing the Jets. I'm no. gonna try to beat them hundred to nothing. I'm trying to beat them down. Beat them. I want. I want to break their spirits and anybody else that's watching. Say, yeah. hey, no, don't come with that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's how it's what supposed to be. 
I'm with you on that. Right. What I like, what I like about week 14, um, Lamar Jackson bought out last night. Man, I'm just going to say straight up. Look, I knocked Lamar Jackson on his passing average. Look, he went 11 for 17, 163 yards and a touchdown. I mean, not out of this world numbers, but I mean, he was efficient when he needed to be. Right. Um, of course, running the ball, which is he's more effective at I mean, mm-hmm. nine carries, 124 yards and two TDs. I mean, I'm not going to knock Lamar on his passing right. to, today. I'm not. He did something last night that was some some fucking Superman hero shit. Right? He did. I mean, whether it was cramps or not, that took him to the locker room and then the backup got hurt. I don't know if it was cramps. He said it was cramps. To me, I mean, I, I saw him run into the bathroom. Uh, so I'm sorry. I saw him run into the locker room and look. I I seen that run before. You know, I right. done that at some Taco Bell or something, <laughs> and I had the bubble guts and I, I did that little pigeon run. So that's what it kind of looked like. I thought I thought he had bubble guts. That's my opinion. My but anyway, he might have uh, some white look. castle before the game. <laughs> look, look, yeah, some little something. <laughs> I, I, it looked like he had bubble guts. It was cramps, and cramps, whatever. Right, uh, right, right, right. Anyway, for him to go out at a pretty bad time of mm-hmm. the game and for him to literally come back at the right time of the right, game right and for him to literally it was like what fourth and five on that throw he made to hollywood right. brown that was a nice throw man i mean Clutch, what made bro. the play the made the play is the fact they thought he was gonna run he's gonna run yeah. and so they all came towards him and left hollywood brown wide and open yeah and, and, and the sign open. of a good leader is Although Hollywood Brown was dropping balls, he still went back to him. Yes, yes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When, it, when he needed to. When he needed him. Right. And so I, 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 I love that about Lamar Jackson. Because, uh, I mean, I've said it on the show many times. Lamar has to get better with passing. Right. And he does. Right. That's just, that's just the fact. Mm-hmm. But when you in situations like this, when it's, it's not about whether you get a better quarterback or better passer. Right. At that moment last night, he was just a better athlete on the field. Mm. And he said, damn it, my team needs to win. <laughs> we need to win so we can stay in this playoff race. And he said, get on my back. Right. And you know what? I, I'm not going to critique your passing. What I do love is you took that team on your back and mm-hmm. said, damn it, we going to win because <laughs> we need to. And honestly, Baltimore needed to win that game last night. Oh, they yeah. need to stay in this playoff rush. Right. So, I mean – Hey, look, I love all that about Lamar Jackson. <laughs> One thing I can't never knock about Lamar Jackson is his competitive his competitive drive right. and his his want to win. Mm-hmm. I can never knock that because he showed all that last night. Bubble right. guts and all. Bubble he guts said, and all. Gonna <laughs> yeah, we going to win. <laughs> he said, hold up, team. Let me drop this bomb real quick. I'll uh, be back. We got a, we got a comment. <laughs> Somebody said, uh, Lexus said, do you think uh, that Lamar – can keep it up, keep up, keep that performance up. Um, I don't, I don't know if the evidence is out there that Lamar can keep it up, but he has to. I mean, you because you're not going to win that division. So right. at this point, they're trying to make sure that they stay in the playoffs, and not only that, seeding. You know what I'm saying? So, um, they're not guaranteed nothing right now. Um, I will say that if Lamar plays like he did last night, mm-hmm. that's a scary. That's a that's a scary offense to deal with if he plays right. like that. Right. Because right. I mean, there's mobile quarterbacks and then there's Lamar Jackson. There's, <laughs> there's different levels. This day. Bro, he literally had people right here in his face, and next thing you know, he was gone. <laughs> right. He was, <laughs> he was gone. Gone. Like, I love Michael Vick growing up. Michael Vick didn't have this type of speed mm-hmm. at all. Like, literally, Lamar Jackson has a type of speed that if you put him in the, in on the outside and say, go run a nine route, just, just go run a goal route. Right. I don't know too many P defenders that's going to be able to stay neck and neck and, and cover him. Like, that's how fast that dude is. Yeah, like, you, 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 can see, you can see his quickness when he runs through an A-gap. <laughs> Heads for the sidelines, and the defender comes out at an angle 
but he goes by so fast, he can't even cut him off. You know what I'm saying? Enough. Because because how you beat speed, especially like like uh, let me take Vince. So when I was playing, I wasn't fast. Yeah. I use angles to catch people, especially people with speed. So if we coming out that backfield like on a sweep or whatever, you know, jet sweep, whatever, you know, so I'm gonna run and stretch him out to yeah. then, and use the sidelines my defense. So that way, okay. well, where he gonna go? He gonna, he gonna go? He gonna run out? or He gonna come to me? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But with Lamar, okay. he's so fast. <laughs> It, he beat you to that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's like, where you go? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. He's a magician. Yeah. I'm, he, I'm dead serious. I've never seen a quarterback that literally makes defenders disappear. Mm-hmm. And literally, there were there were times in that game that when you, like, just to bring up angles, just because, right. like, we play football, right. you, you hit it right on the head. Mm-hmm. You, if you got that angle on a runner, mm-hmm. you can – whether if you're just faster than you or not, if right. you got the right angle, you can get them down. Right. There were times that athletes, I'm talking about Miles Garrett, who mm-hmm. at one point was leading the league in sacks this right. year, had the angle on him on mm-hmm. and didn't get a fingernail on that guy. Right, right. I was like, like wow. I'm like, this, there's nothing you can do with that man in his feet. Now, right. I'm going to say this about Lamar. If he wants a 10-year – 11 year career he has to develop the pass because he'll because because your speed goes when you get older yes mm-hmm. look at Vic Vic was still that man mm-hmm. but when he got older he wasn't doing all that running stuff he right. had to become a better passer right he now, used to give him somebody that can teach him how to teach him the, the mechanics of passing yes you know I think I think some I was thinking about this today now that you brought it up so we starting to see the evolution of, especially when it comes to black athletes. But you know, you still see some in. Uh, you still see in a lot of the other quarterbacks too. But I'm just, you know, what I'm saying, but majority of them are black quarterbacks. But you seen the evolution of the running quarterback. Mm-hmm. So run first. A lot of them was run first, pass, you know, pass later. However, you still see, and this is just a generalization. You still see. With your white quarterbacks, some most of them have the fundamentals of passing. Yeah, and I think a lot of times with a lot of the black quarterbacks, they lean too much on their athleticism mm-hmm. and not really taking the time to learn the fundamental fundamentals of passing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because you know you are because you are athlete. That means you could probably throw the ball eighty yards down the field. Yeah, can you throw eighty yards accurate? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. That's the thing. Different. It's totally a little different. You know what I'm saying? And each level that you go, the more accurate you have to be. Yeah. And I think that's one of the you know, other things I'm starting to see, you know, with the – and I think I don't think it's all on that athlete. I think it's even with some of the coaching because some of the coaches say, i never seen speed like that. Let's use that. So you yeah. think about, think about like, high school, college level. You know what I'm saying? You're going to dominate with that speed. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like you looking at, I'm a, I'm gonna use I'm gonna use that speed I'm gonna use that speed and you're not really taking time to develop him as a player, especially in those levels because it's win now. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Not to say NFL is not, but college and high school, especially because you don't especially in college you don't win for one or two years they are looking for the next coach. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So you gotta go because go. the, NFL trend the winning too, brings you know, money. You know, in the first two, first two, three seasons, but they see, already got you on the high. But see, well, here's so. the thing about the NFL. Yeah, NFL has as, as and that's just another generalization has a more loyal fan base. When you look at as if your t- if your team is traditionally sucks, your fans will still come out pay pay for it and watch. Support. You know what I'm saying? Pay support. They gonna complain. They're gonna oh, yeah, support. They're they gonna support. Hey, I, I did 32 years of complaining, bro. Right. <laughs> so you look at, but you look at on college levels, your fan base is not only a student, it's your alumni. Yeah. And your alumni is yeah, that's the one who's putting the money in. So they're gonna be like, hey, we need to win, or you ain't gonna get this money. Mm-hmm. Versus like it, right. It's versus like the NFL, the fan base is us. Yeah. And you know, a lot of us are loyal to our team because it represents our city or our state that we live in mm-hmm. so that's a little more different type of lawyer we're gonna just keep you know look look at lions fans look at cleveland yeah. fans 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like Cleveland put seemed to be putting up a, a a decent product the last couple of years. But I'm just saying. This year. No, no. This year. I mean, it wasn't horrible year. last year. I mean, you, you can Nine see the potential. Ten. You can see the potential. Nine and oh, oh okay, okay. You can see Nine the potential. That way. Yeah, Nine you can see the potential where it's like I can see them might be going somewhere where I would expect something better next year. You know what I'm saying? No, I hear you. I Versus hear you. like Lions fan, there was no potential there. It was like oh, these no, new, same old Lions. But anyway, you know, we, but those fans still what every year, yeah, and year, every year out. they coming out, they buying season tickets. You know, mm-hmm. they going to the they uh, buying th- merch, right, they buying buy merch. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're right. So I think that's that's part of the the issue that I see with a lot of these running quarterbacks. You know, and, and, and especially like I said, the black athletes because. And, and, and like I said, it's a generalization. Can I say every black athlete is is a prime player. example? Uh-huh. Prime example. Uh-huh. Look at Cam Newton right now. <sighs> oh man, he never developed an actual consistent passing game. He was now, he, now his no best passing game. Team. His best game when he had Norm Turner down there in you know, Carolina. Yeah. In Carolina, you know oh, what I'm saying? <laughs> and what's no nor nor uh, uh, Turner left? <laughs> So did Pam, so did Cam's passing game. <laughs> he took Dang, it, he must have packed that up in his suitcase too. And I'll be taking your passing game with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Now trust me. I, you know how I feel about Cam. But anyway, right. what I what I hate about week 14 is it shows the importance of your kicker. Yes. Yes. Now I just got two. I just got two small examples, but it's been a problem all season, and right. we we talked about it on the show before. You mm-hmm. know, you kind of kind of touched on it about a few weeks ago about the inconsistency when it comes to kickers, right? But this weekend, it 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 reared his ugly head again. So, right. Uh, Cody Parkey mm-hmm. for the Cleveland Browns last night missed one field goal, missed one extra point. Right. So that's four points off the board. Mm-hmm. All right. So and they lost by three. Well, I uh, well you add the safety. It was forty-seven, forty-two. But I'm saying, well, I mean, but, but the safety might not have happened. They had that. You know okay. I mean? So, like I said, they lost by three. Right. So imagine you got those four points on the board. Mm-hmm. That's a different game. Holy might be a different game. outcome. Right. All right. So you also got Dan Bailey for the Minnesota Vikings. Mm-hmm. Missed three field goals, missed the extra point for uh, a missing of 10 points against the Buccaneers on Sunday. Right. Right. That final score was 14 to 26. You throw in those 10 points, it's possibly 24, 26. Mm-hmm. Possibly could have won that game. Right. Because it's, it's, it's not like Tom Brady and the Buccaneers looked awesome. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like all four, but not all four. They, <laughs> So, I mean, it, but it's not just Dale. Look mm-hmm. at Steven Kostowski for the Titans. Right. I mean, he's been up and down, up mm-hmm. and down. Mm-hmm. He's been in the league for 14, 15 years. Could right. He, I mean, possibly could have been considered a Hall of Fame kicker at one point. Maybe the ball, maybe, maybe, maybe having those deflated balls. <laughs> in New England. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. <laughs> but... <laughs> He's been exposed. He's been exposed. <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and say that kickers aren't athletes mm-hmm. because I mean, there's a, yeah, please a though, because you know your boy, going your boy, uh, what's his name? Well, McAfee. Yeah, McAfee gonna really get, get on you. <laughs> hey, athletes. Hey, hey, but you know what, McAfee? Well, because I watch wrestling, so uh-huh. McAfee's been doing his wrestling thing lately, yeah. and you still got to be someone of an athlete to do that. Mm-hmm. So you know, props, props to him. But all I'm saying is that when you have one job, <laughs> one, we ain't asking you to tackle, we ain't asking you to catch, we ain't asking you to throw, we ain't asking you to run. Right. We ain't asking you none of that. Right. One job. And only I brought that up just to say that if you got a kicker that missed four points, mm-hmm. another kicker that missed 10 points, this is the nitty gritty of the NFL. One of these kickers is going to cost this team a playoff spot, a, a potential Super Bowl spot, right. a potential championship. Right, right, right. One of these kickers is going to 
gonna mess up and, and just literally just especially with Cody Parkey. That's double doink guy that was in Chicago that that cost the Bears a playoff game because he double doinked. Right. And you still coming in and cleaning and doing the same mess. Like at some point as a kicker, you have to like, all right, I need to hone it in. Let me get it. Let me get my together. You know what I'm saying? Because right. you got one job. And hope and and me personally, if I was ever a coach, I'm trying to make sure that I never leave any game in the hands of a kicker. And is oh, and man. I don't care if oh, I got yeah. Adam Terry, I don't care if I got got Justin Tucker from the uh from the from the Ravens. I don't care. Mm-hmm. I don't care if you accurate kicker in the world. I am not trying to leave it in your foot. Right. Because you it might be the one time you decide to start missing shit. I can't, <laughs> I can't allow that. All right. <laughs> I can't. Right. Especially when you got 52 other guys on that team that's been busting their ass Mm -hmm. and literally in in more physical positions, especially in the trenches. Right, right. Your body on the line. And our kicker just missed. And we lost. That's demoralizing. That's deflating. And and quite honestly, if I'm on that team, I'm pissed off. (laughs) (laughs) You got one one job. One. One. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Oof. God. You good? That's crazy. That's not like get off my chest material. Hey, no, nah, no, nah, because I got some like that. that, that. I, just, I just, because, I mean, we both play ball, bro. Right, so right. You know, you know the energy and the effort, and not only just in the actual games, you're talking about the whole week. You're talking right. about practice, gym sessions, mm-hmm. weight rooms. I mean, you, 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 if you if the smart players are doing nutritional things to make sure their body's right, right, you're doing all this preparation for one game a week, mm-hmm. and your kicker just lost it for you. Yeah, he got kind of pissed on that. Oh yeah, like, come oh. on, bro. Come on, bro. Come <laughs> on. <man. laughs> all right, folks. So that's our that's our first leading off segment. What you like, what you hate. We're gonna go to a quick commercial break, and in the midst of that, I'm gonna drop off couple of these scores for week 14. Then I'm going to get a glass of water because I got cotton mouth like hell. But anyway. (laughs) (laughs) We had New England Patriots and Cam Newton go down to L.A. And they forgot to show up. Uh, Cam looked horrible. Losing to the Los Angeles Rams, 20-43. Then, on Sunday's action, the reigning defending Super Bowl champion, Kansas City Chiefs, almost let that game get a little bit too close for comfort, beating the Miami Dolphins, 33-27. Down in the Windy City, Chicago, Mitch Trubisky actually looked like a quarterback, beating the Houston Texans, 36-7. Dallas, in the return of Andy Red Rocket Dalton went down to Cincinnati, getting a victory over the killerless Joe Borrowless Bengals, thirty to seven. Down in the Big Apple, Kyler Murray said we needs to get this win because his Arizona Cardinals beating up on the New York Giants, twenty six to seven. Down in Florida, Tampa Bay, him and the Buccaneers. Managed to squeak out a victory over the Minnesota Vikings, 26 to 14. And a rematch of Super Bowl 50 with the Denver Broncos beating the Carolina Panthers, 32 to 27. And last but not least, you had King Henry with another 200 plus yard game running all up and down them sorry ass Jacksonville Jaguars, 31 to 10. Some of your scores for week 14, and we will be super hey, and hope, hope, shot to shot. And we Kick it. are back. I O W Sports, we are back. It's your boy, Walker Mar. That nigga, Jamal. What up, and bro? And we are getting to the picks. All right. All right. Now, just to go back over week 14 picks, both Jamal and Lex Bub. Shout out, Lex Bub. Keep doing your thing over at Amazon, getting your ass kicked. <laughs> All this Christmas shit. Yep. <laughs> but get that back, Charlie. Get that back. Both Jamel and Lex came in last week with 11 and 5 record. And of course, yours truly 10 and 6. We have a new champion, y'all. 
a new leader, not champion, new yeah, leader. leader. Lex Bub at 130 victories, 77 losses, and one tie. I come in right behind Lex Bub, 129, 78, and one. And Mel is still creeping. You hanging in there, bro, 125, 82, and one. So um, it's getting tight. It's just like uh, a true, true uh, <laughs> reflection of the NFL league. Right. Stuff is getting tight around here. Getting tight right? up in here. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting tight. They spring to tight. <laughs> <laughs> Tighter than pantyhose are two sizes small. Hey, man. Two. <laughs> or or went went up. Uh oh, uh oh. Big fro- chicks wear a sausage stuffed in casing. <laughs> but uh, you know. Uh oh. <laughs> that's not. <a> <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we getting off track. Let's bring us back in. <laughs> All right, let's get to the picks. <laughs> All right, so this week is actually so. Last week was the first week in a while that we actually got through all our regular season games, no COVID situations, at least reported, and all games got played. No rescheduling, no nothing. So as y'all can see, we're actually filming on the original day we're supposed to Tuesday. Right. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, let's get to the picks. Hopefully no more other uh, COVID situations. But, right, uh, right. This is the week that we actually start getting a couple of games on Saturdays. And we got, Oh, man. Yes, we're at that time of the year. So, <laughs> but Thursday, we're still kicking it off. Four and nine, Los Angeles Chargers. Seven and six, Las Vegas Raiders. Mm, mm, mm. Who want to take Los Vegas did not look good last Vegas week. Vegas ain't looking good last couple of weeks. That's what happens when they, when they play up so big trying to beat the Chiefs and they still look like trash. But that's my, you know. I'm going to take the. I'm gonna, I, I say I should take the dang on. I'm going to take the Raiders. You going to take them? I'm going to take the Raiders. You going to take the Raiders, huh? Mm. I'm, I'm going to go. You know what? I, I already said it a couple of weeks back. I'm going to go. Chargers, because I think they want to save Anthony Lynn's job, even though he's done everything in the world to lose it. But they <laughs> like him, right? The players like him. I just don't think he's the best fit for that team. Mm-hmm. Anyway, ten and three, Buffalo Bills, five and eight, Denver Broncos. I'm go Buffalo. Yeah, Buffalo's. If you look at it, if you really look at it. Buffalo is a Hail Mary from winning like seven in a row. Right. Right. I mean, it's kind of hard finding a team hotter than Buffalo right now. True. True. All right. Four and nine. Carolina Panthers, ten and three, Green Bay. Ooh, that might that's a that's a scary game. It's a trap game for Green Bay for sure. Right. I'm gonna go Green Bay. Aaron, don't let me down. Hey, Detroit almost got me that upset last week. They almost did, dog. Mm-hmm. Um, Marvin Jones had that pass. He was in just saying. I I said the same thing. Mm-hmm. He because when he caught it, it, his foot was on the ground, and then he tapped that last one. Right. And then they tried. It was they didn't have conclusive evidence to say they caught it. I'm like, yeah, I was like, what you looking at? <laughs> what you need? Hey, that, that goes back to what the hell they call the catch? You, you had you had, right, you had the knife and the bloody glove. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> What's the problem? Here? What's the problem here? <laughs> Eight and five Tampa Bay Buccaneers going down to four and nine Atlanta. Ooh, I'm Scott. You know, I'm tempted to take Atlanta on this one, but I'm gonna take the Bucks. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with Tampa Bay too, but it's reluctantly they they they, they still have to figure out what the hell they want to really do. Right. I don't. Here's my thing with Tampa Bay. They actually have a different, a decent running game. Like mm-hmm. Ronald Jones is actually doing decently. And right. I don't know if they're trying to make Tom just throw it all over the field or I don't they, they, I'm just not understanding what what do they want to actually be good at. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, I they said with Tom being 43, mm-hmm. I'm just thinking, hey, especially when you got it, they actually got a good running game. Right. Like run the ball. Let Tom do what he do with the short passes and the play action, but it's like I feel like Arians is trying to make him be something that he's not. And it's not. Here's my thing too: you got an older quarter. You got an older quarterback. Anyway, 
If you why not? Yeah. Why not use your running game and beef and beef up your running game, plus and then save him for the playoffs. He throwing all he throwing all sixteen games across the field playoffs. You know he tired. Mm. Save him for the playoffs. I, I guess it's too much common sense for me to even say that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know I don't, what to say. I don't know either, bro. <laughs> all right, five and eight, San Francisco, four and nine, Dallas. San Fran all the way. Uh, I normally wouldn't do this, but I'm going to go Dallas on this aspect because they finally got a win last week. They did. And that division is still up. It is. I mean, it just really is. I mean, we talked about everybody knows how terrible the NFC is, but I'm I'm not going to say that they're going to win it because they're not. I think Washington's <laughs> going to win that division. Right. I'm just saying that if Dallas can still make some kind of run, if and if they, it's not like they ain't got the talent on offense. It's that damn defense. Oh my god, that damn defense. Oh my god, it sucks. And the only reason why they look good is because they was playing a team with no off. They playing it. They played a two and ten team. Two ten and one tie team, and they was without they kill them. So, right, right. Good, good for y'all. Good win. Whatever. Fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Five and eight, Detroit Lions. Nine and four, Tennessee. I don't. I don't. Do uh, we need no. to have a conversation? Mm-mm. Okay, I'm going I, Tennessee. I think, yeah, I think we all going ten <laughs> on that one. Don't get well, me wrong. And Stafford might not even play. Lot, and plus, Stafford might not even play. Yeah. So I really ain't going for this right then. Cause uh, I don't think Chase can do it. Chase gonna get chased all game. Well, especially when he's playing Tennessee, and Tennessee still they still trying to jockey their position in the playoff. And push. they and Detroit have trouble with the run. And then Henry might have four hundred yards. Bro, that nigga, might, that nigga might run from here to Ohio and back. <laughs> Damn, Henry is a problem, bro. He's gonna he be is a problem. problem. He's gonna be a problem, man. I can't see no stopping there, Henry. Jeez. Four and nine, Houston Texans, nine and four, Indianapolis. Do we need to have Mm-mm. a discussion? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Right. Keep I'm, moving. Just, I'm, Keep moving. Sure. I'm just trying to get through the formality. <laughs> oh, Lex Lex went with the upsets. He thinks Houston might get him. Okay, good. I might be able to pull ahead of her then. Keep it going. <laughs> <laughs> All right. New six and seven, New England, eight and five, Miami. Miami. You know what? This is another game that can go either way because I, it can go either way. But and Miami defense I, is tough. Yeah, they tough. They play Kansas City tough. All right. Look. No, I'll talk about it. It's okay, fine. go ahead. We just know what Bill Belichick does against rookie quarterbacks. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. And Tua looks good, but mm-hmm. he's a rook. Right. Belichick don't like losing the rooks <laughs> at all. I understand. <laughs> I'm still going Miami. I had no faith in Cam. Oh hell no! <laughs> that's why, I, and that's what's making this pick tough for me because. Cam looks absolutely. He looks like he lost. That nigga look high. Like, like literally, those teams are literally putting the whole defense in the box. He looking like football. I just don't know where Cam be throwing. Sidebar. Cam don't know what he's throwing to. I've already said this about Cam many times. This is the same Cam that was in Carolina. He he, he never been proficient when it comes to. Yeah, but I ain't never seen him throw like this. This nigga no, thought like he thought like he need glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I left my glasses in the locker room because I'm not gonna get there. You know what? I'm gonna go New England. Might be upset. I don't know if you can that an upset. Hey, Be- Belichick don't like losing the rooks, bro. He just he just don't. That's uh, that's not that's not him. That's not his mo. It's a pride thing for him, right? And then only that. You, you don't want to lose to one of your former assistants that was coaching under you. Right, like right, Brian right. Boyd, 
he's been doing a phenomenal job. Ryan Boyd's been doing great. He might, he might pull the uh, coach he might of the pull year. A Josh, De- uh, Josh McDaniels in Denver um, on him. No, no. no. <laughs> Don't even bring up Josh McDaniels. Sorry, yeah. I'm just saying when they played the Patriots that year and he was um, no, he's coaching, yeah. they're getting with him. Yeah. All right, six and seven Chicago Bears, six and seven Minnesota. They both need a win. <sighs> I don't want to go off of last week because they they got with um they look good last week. Man, that was against Houston, bro. But I was, what I'm saying, but I still don't. I mean, I got that much faith in um what cousin though. He's looking pretty decent this year. I'm, I'm gonna go Minnesota. Give me them Vikings. I'm gonna go Chicago. They I they they just got the. They have the better personnel on defense. Mm-hmm. So they got a good defense. Um both both of these teams need need to win. Like right. I would Bad. probably circle this game as as like probably that that go to game as in as an entertainment wise. Right. They both need to win. Right. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> this next game, nine and four Seattle, six and seven Washington football team. Mm. See, I don't need to win bad. Mm. I know. <laughs> I'm tempted to take Washington on this one, though, bro. Hey, you saw what Chase Young did last week. All right. I'm tem- you know what? I'm going to take Washington. Mm. Give me them, give me them no-name niggas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right there with you, bro. I'm going to go Washington, too. They 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 playing just like real rough neck mm-hmm. tough hard right, nose right, football right not pretty because that offense is their quarterback okay their quarterback situation isn't great right um, but I mean you're talking about they the defense scored like two touchdowns last week defense look good I mean that double with Chase Young look like something nasty bro mm-hmm. like, what you gonna do with him I mean be on your back. Yeah, yeah. Quarterback <laughs> gonna be on your back. Right. See, but here's the thing with Chase Young is you can double him, but they still got some. That front four is still solid. Still nice. Mm-hmm. If you double Chase Young, you still got three other problems you got to worry about on that right, defense. Right, right, right. So, and we all know what Russell don't like, or any quarterback like <laughs> they don't like they don't like defensive linemen in their face. They right, like right. Defense. Denise they, Short they, can't they, see they, around or over him. Like, yeah. So, and man. the bad thing about it is, is we know about the mobility of, with Russell, but when you still got cats like Chase Young, who is big and, and can move, right, right, that's a different type of problem. That's all because I mean we already said this. He ain't, he ain't got Lamar Jackson mobility. <laughs> oh no, no, <laughs> and he older, so <laughs> no. <laughs> One in twelve, Jacksonville, eight and five, Baltimore. I don't think we need to talk about that. Uh, uh, we good on that one. All I know is Baltimore, you cannot Sleep mess around. Had Sleep that hell of a game yesterday and lay an egg and get beat. That's all I'm saying. That's embarrassing. Don't, don't let do Minshew beat you. Yeah, don't let Minshew. Yeah. Gardner Minshew. Right. Don't let me do it. <laughs> you better say because I'm tight and, and yeah. run, right, <laughs> run right over him. <laughs> oh, snap. All right. 0-13, winless Jets. Right, nine keep it going. Rams. Yeah, it's not even yeah, it's not even. Yeah, okay. Four, eight, and one, Philadelphia Eagles, seven and six, Arizona Cardinals. This might actually be a good matchup, too. I'm going to go Arizona. Yeah, both of these cats got to win. Uh, ooh. I don't know. This is hard, bro. It's hard. It the reason why hard. I say it's hard because we saw that team with Philly look totally different. It's, a, Jalen. it's, a, it's right. a total team effort that win. It was. And I don't want to talk too much about the Eagles because I'm going to talk about them later. But mm-hmm. damn, they look like literally like it was like a breath of fresh air. Like, right, right. Man, we, we're here. We, <laughs> we could really win. And the crazy thing about them winning that is, is that they also put themselves in good position to with their the- NFC East because. Mm-hmm. They end the season playing Washington, y'all. Mm. And if Washington doesn't win another game, 
and Philly keeps winning, Philly can sneak in the playoffs. I'm just saying it's a possibility. I'm right. not saying it's going to happen. You ain't going to never hear the end of it. It's, it's a possibility. <laughs> but I'm just saying. I mean, it's, it's, it is. It's a possibility. All right. 12 and 1 Kansas City Chiefs, 10 and 3 New Orleans. Oh, I didn't pick. Oh, well, you know what? I'm going to go Philly. All right. Philly, Philly with the Philly special. <laughs> Philly upset special. There we go. I believe in you, Hurts. Go hurt them, baby. <laughs> All right. I'll take Casey. Number one, Chiefs, 10 and 3, New Orleans. You already know who I'm picking. I'll so, take Casey. Uh, Casey across the board. I will say this. If Tayson Hill plays, Chiefs will win. Mm-hmm. The book's out on Tayson Hill. Tayson Hill. I mean, yeah, he's 3-1 and one as a starter since Breeze been out. But the book's written on him. You know, he, he, he's, he, to me, he's, he's a, a, a more manageable quarterback to game plan for. I'm not scared about his passing ability <laughs> at all. Cause his, his deep balls are ducks. I don't care. What yeah. Said. Yeah. Um, he that's why, that's ball. why they can't, they can't get in the game and get behind. Yeah. See, they can get in the game where it's manageable. Taysom has a better chance of winning because he can do yeah. short, you know, short dumps, quick slant, stuff like yeah. that. Get Kamara going. Get the running game going. They have to. Right. Here's the thing about Taysom Hill. He's been turning the ball over since he's been in there at starting position. Right. He's been holding on to the ball a little bit too longer mm-hmm. than we expected. And literally, he's been sitting like a sitting duck and getting strip sacked right. a few times. Right. Um, and he's going to give you a couple of chances at some uh, – some interceptions. So um, I agree. I'm not worried about chasing him. <laughs> now, Drew Brees plays. The good thing about playing Drew Brees is he's been out for a minute, at least a month. Mm-hmm. So his timing, his 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 um his relationships with his receivers. Right. Then timing wise and, and being in the spot that you're at. Mm-hmm. That's gonna be it's going to take some minute to get back in that groove. I agree. Maybe, maybe a whole whole first half might not look so hot for him. Maybe he might turn on in the second half. Right. But either way, if you're playing Kansas City, you're down 14, mm-hmm. and you want Drew Brees to get back in the game, he's going to have to pass it. And then you're leaving yourself open for pass rush and knocking them ribs back out of place Ooh. and cracking them. That's, That's what I'm saying. Right. So – and and it's not a diss on, on New Orleans. I'm just saying, is it was just a it's it's a weird time of the season for a, a 40, 40, 40 and forty one year old to come back out the so many cracked ribs and expect him to have a great game. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. This next game is an actually interesting matchup as well. You have nine and four Cleveland Browns. Five and eight New York Giants. Giants need this win. Like, need this win. <sighs> I'm going to go Cleveland. It hurts my soul to say it, but I'm going to go Cleveland. I'm going Giants. We all know how Baker Mayfield played when, when that D-line be on his ass. And Giants got a good D-line. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say this real quick. And then we don't get to that last pick. I know everybody want to jump on Baker. Oh, great game against Tennessee. I think he had an average game last night. Um, <laughs> and no, no, that's, that's not me hating. I'm just saying, just look at his stats. He he didn't even, you know, he barely hit 58% of his completion percentage. And what until really in that second half, but pretty much damn near late third quarter, fourth quarter, where he actually started getting rolling. Right. But it was also Baltimore defensive backs start dropping like flies. They getting hurt. They getting they was losing pieces. And then all of a sudden Baker starts getting hot. In my opinion, last night, Baker Mayfield was pretty much held in check until, you know, they had some some injuries on that on that Baltimore defense. And then he started picking it up. But I mean, you look at that game and Baltimore is really dominating that game for damn near at least for the first two and a half quarters before Cleveland decided to show up. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know what game everybody else was watching. That's the game I saw. I 
I mean, I, I just saw Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt running running their ass off. I didn't see As usual. Baker Mayfield putting that team out in the league. That's not what I saw. I saw Baker turn into a Baker against the Titans when Baltimore started getting hurt. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> to end the week, you got 11-2, and two, Pittsburgh Steelers. Going against two ten and one Cincinnati. I don't think we need to talk mm, about no, that. We good on that. Okay. Yeah. Hey, remember, no borrow, no window. That's right, bro. <laughs> no borrow, no window. You know what? It, it it's really crazy how Pittsburgh mess around never, and let them win this game. Well, I'm just saying, like how how Cincinnati looks like a total different team without borrow. Now, of course, I wasn't expecting much from the Bengals, but. Let's be honest. When Bora was playing, they were in a lot of those games. Right? Could they win them? Maybe, maybe not. I mean, but you know, ever since his injury, it's like the whole life of that team. Like, just who, who y'all? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need to cross the bridge and go back and go into Kentucky. Man, they need to. <laughs> they got to figure something out. Go to Covington. Um, uh, honestly, what they need to do is uh, they need to go ahead and, and vamp that offensive line big yes, time yes. in the offseason and mm-hmm. get a couple of defensive pieces. They need it. Uh, I mean, honestly, I, I don't even think their offense is really the offensive weapons is really that bad. No, um, no. They, they just got to. They just I told they you, got I like, I like, I like the Bernard, man. I think he don't get enough. Oh, Giovanni Bernard is nice. Yeah, but, I, I mean, he don't get enough praise. He may not get enough praise, but at the same time, it's is is because he's sitting behind Joe Mixon, who who I, I mean, I mean Joe, when yeah. he, he's he he's a good, he's a decent running back. You know, he he's gonna produce. But I, I like Bernard because he's an overall good, uh, back. You know, he can run, he can catch. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But anyway, that's just my opinion. Now nah, I hear you. All right, that was our picks, folks. Um, for week 15, everybody's getting down to the nitty gritty. Like I said, you know, uh, we getting closer in, in, in our personal IOW sports. Right. Um, title, you know, Lex is up by one game. Mel is, is back by five games. So, like, are we right? We are all on top of each other next to each other in the standing. So, uh, you know, what looked like a runaway for me in the first 14 weeks is now a dog race. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the way it <laughs> pays. <laughs> <laughs> As a way to cook and crumble sometimes, race man. Them. It's kind of similar to the NFL. Race you know, them dogs. Race them dogs. Hey, <laughs> hey, it ain't how you start. It is how you how gonna you finish. finish. That's right. Hey. All right. So we're gonna cut to commercial. I'm gonna go over the rest of these week 14 scores, everybody. And then when we come back off commercial break, our favorite segment. Get some shit off your chest. Hey. Boys, everybody, you had Philip Old Man Rivers in the Indianapolis Colts going to Las Vegas Raiders, where they was putting all in. They went all in on the Las Vegas Raiders, 44-27. Then up in Seattle, Sierra's man Russell Wilson was cooking up a ass whooping for the Jets, 40-3. Down in the D and the glove. Detroit Lions almost, almost did it for your boys. Just losing by one score to the Green Bay Packers, 31-24. Down in the city of brotherly love, them Eagles showed no love to them Saints, tried to march in, beating them 24-21. Down in good old Los Angeles, the Chargers managed to get a victory over the hapless Atlanta Falcons, 20-17. Down in San Francisco, they beat bruising, still put up a fight, but came up just short, losing to the Washington football team, 23-15. to In Sunday night's action, D, Buffalo Bill, stampede all over those men of steel from Pittsburgh, 26-15. And then in last night's Monday night thriller, hell of a game, the Baltimore Ravens end up beating Baker Mayfield and the Cleveland Browns, 47-42. And those are all your scores for week 14, y'all. Be right back. All right, all right. 
while we're waiting on Lamar to come back. We got a few announcements we can do. Uh, get ready for us on the 31st of December. We are doing a year in review. So we want y'all to stay tuned for that. Um, also, I want I want to announce a podcast I want you to check out. It is called You Don't Have to Be Stupid. Check it out on Spotify and Anchor. That is my daughter and a couple of her friends started a podcast. So I want you guys to check it out. It's called You Don't Have to Be Stupid. And we are back. Holla at your boy! Jalen Hurts gave him a pulse. God That's bless what America. gave him a pulse. Jalen Hurts. Wentz was told how great he was. Wentz was coming out talking about, that's just the way we do things around here. You want to blame that on the coach? We can pin it all we want on the quarterback. Have fun with that. I am saying that you look at him and Wentz, and clearly that is not a marriage that is going to last. You have to sit Wentz for the rest of this season to see whether Jalen Hurts can be your quarterback going forward. I don't think Carson Wentz will ever be the Carson Wentz from 2017 again. Because Carson Wentz is over. So you just heard that was uh, from first take. I was Max Kettleman. And, you know, you had some Dan Olaski mixed in with Stephen, Stephen A. So those who watched the game saw Jalen Hurts play. You can't hear me? Uh, hold on a second. Those who watched the game. Ah, there you go. <laughs> those who watched the game and saw Jalen Hurts play. And those who watched the season and watched Philadelphia Eagles and Carson Wentz play. Can this be the end of Carson Wentz? Mm. Now, I'm not a... I'm not one to take a one game victory and then claim Jalen Hurts as the Messiah. Mm-hmm. But I will say the one thing I did notice that this was a total team effort. And I think when you had Wentz at the helm and he refused to bend, refused to change, I think that's where the issue more li- lies. Then his overall athletic ability and everything. Now, did he make bonehead decisions? Yes. You know what I'm saying? Did I see things he could have done better? Yes. But here's the thing about sports and athletes. You can make bonehead decisions. You can, uh, you know, make mistakes and stuff like that. But then what you do is you, you view the tape, you watch the tape, you make the adjustments, and you come back out and you hopefully – you fix those mistakes. But if you're a person who refused to change because he had made statements, oh, that's just how we play. This is how we do things, which is showing his mentality is that I'm not going to change. This is what I do. So now you have you have that, excuse me, what, what 13 games? What, 12, was it 12 or 13 games? You have that mentality. Then you have, you bring in a player First of all, he's a rookie, so he's happy to play. So he's going to come off the bench already energetic, ready to play. And he didn't have to do much. You know, come in, manage the game. The team, the team seemed to be galvanized and rallied around him. I mean, mm-hmm. even, even some of Peterson's decisions were better. Yeah. You know, he didn't suit things. I was like, okay, I don't know why he did that. But in general, even his, his decisions was better. So... I say all that to say, is it time to just move on from Wentz and just let Jalen be your starting quarterback? Hey, go ahead and answer that question. What would you do? You general manager of the Philadelphia Eagles. What you going to do with Carson Wentz in that cap here? I think, I think I'm going to take a chance on Jalen. Now, granted, I'm on the outside looking in. So I haven't seen him, what he done in practice and what he looked like. And like I said, I don't want to. Um, I wouldn't be make a prisoner of the moment. I wouldn't, I wouldn't make a decision this year as a GM. I will watch him, see how he finish out the season, see what he look like, see if he can reproduce some of that same things. And I'm not looking per se uh, win percentage. 
as much as how he manages the game, what he does in the game. Of course, you want to win because you know you're in a good position to make the playoffs. But my thing is, how does he manage the game? Did he really did he reproduce some of the things he did in his uh, win that we saw in his debut win? You know what I'm saying? Because like, if there's some things I still see there, there's some I can work with. Then we can make those adjustments and make him better for next year. You know. Um, but it, it, I just like I said, some things I would like to see. I would like to see him get in a situation where he have to pass his way out. Can he do that? You know, when when a run game, if he can't run. When you can't run anymore because you're down, so you're gonna have to pass your way out. Can he do that? You know, I want to see things like that. What can he work with in a tight game? You know, where is it's tight and y'all just, you just need you only gonna win by maybe a field goal. Can you march down the field? And get your team in position to get the game winning field goal. You know, all those different scenarios, I want to see if he can do it. And then I can probably make my decision as a GM and say, okay, I think I can go with this guy. And I can go ahead and move on for Carson Wentz, um, free, free up that money. And then, you know, buffer up my team, get more players on defense, um, fix that line, offensive line. You know, so I, can, I have more money to do that to protect. Jalen Hurts back there. Now you're right. You know, you're right. Give him more time. Mm-hmm. Um, it seemed like to me, and like I said, I, I'm, I was in the huddle that Peterson might said, "Hey, if you don't see anything, just go ahead and take off." Because he wasn't hesitating. You know what I'm saying? He was like, "Oh, they go hoach. I'm out. They, they go hoach. I'm out." You know what I'm saying? Which is good in some ways. In some ways, it's not because sometimes you have to stand back there and watch a play develop. Um, yep. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like. You have to have that 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 insight to know. Okay, I need to run here, or hey, it might be a, it might be a play developing. Let me sit in this pocket, you know, what I'm saying a little bit longer and watch this play develop. So that's my that's one of the things I want to get off my chest. What you think? Oh, just one. Huh? Oh, that was just one. Yeah, I got I got one more thing I'm gonna talk about. But I'm gonna let you go ahead. Okay. Um. I actually like what you said. Uh, it kind of plays in the mind, um, but just to piggyback all kind of kind of few of your statements. Mm-hmm. Um, if I'm a GM, uh, the only problem is is eating up that cap hit with Carson Wentz. Right. Um, me personally, mm-hmm. I still trade. I I would trade him to the Indianapolis Colts because I think that they'll be the only team silly enough to take that contract right. from you. You got when it comes to Carson Wentz, because, I mean, it makes more. It makes sense. Frank Wright was mm-hmm. the offensive coordinator in Philly that kind of helped Carson in that MVP season 2017 before he got hurt. Right. So that makes logical sense. Okay. And just look at Indianapolis coach in general. They they still gave 20 million uh, to Andrew Luck right. for his signing bonus, even after he just abruptly retired. They still mm-hmm. gave him the money. Didn't ask for it back. Right. They, then they gave Jacoby Brissett up this pay rate to twenty million a year because he stuck around. <laughs> and then you go and pay old man Rivers twenty five million this yeah. year for one Jerry year. Ratchet, so man. yeah, so I I can see them as literally being the only team silly enough to go or in logical sense to go get Carson Wentz. So well, them and Jacksonville because yeah, Jacksonville yeah. Jackson. they win the Maybe, so maybe, maybe the Jets they might not they might be ready to move on for oh, 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 not the Jets oh no they ain't stupid they said we, <laughs> we, we take him for Trevor we take him for Trevor no they <laughs> now I am interested to see what team is actually going to pick up Sam Darnold because yeah. he's still young he was a first round pick and mm-hmm. he, I mean I think yeah. if you get him under the right so is Donald. Well, you say was Donald a victim of bad coaching, or just Donald just not what he? Hey, he all I'm gonna say it like this. To be. I'm gonna say it like this: Ryan Tannehill under Adam Gase, mm-hmm. Ryan Tannehill without Adam Gase. So I'm saying that's so. That's why. That's, that's why I'm saying Donald may have a chance. And that's what I'm saying. I'm gonna let I'm gonna let everybody have their own opinion. I'm just putting the nuggets out there. Right. All I'm saying. Is Ryan Tannehill <laughs> under Adam Gase? Ryan Tannehill without Adam Gase? Right. Looks like two totally different quarterbacks, in my opinion. Right. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Start calling him Jesus because he's been resurrected. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
But for for my segment to get off your chest, is it kind of plays into yours. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm gonna throw out a word: premature. Right. Um, and what I mean by premature is is that ejaculation. <laughs> no, no, oh, okay. they, go ahead, go ahead. N- not that one, sir. Okay, um, but that's bad for guys too. <laughs> that sucks for you. <laughs> and what I mean, what I mean by premature is, is that people get caught up in uh, the moment. They get premature with judgments and shit like that. Mm-hmm. And one thing that I wanted to get off my chest with, and with the word premature is, when GMs are making these contracts to certain players, right. I think they get premature. They get too gun ho. They get mm-hmm. prisoner of the moment, and then they throw money out and contracts out and it doesn't pan out to what they thought and what they got caught in the moment or uh right and so here's my thing when the eagles gave that contract extension in 2019 to carson wentz Mm -hmm. i thought it was premature what did carson wentz prove that he deserved that extension i mean he's been hurt he's been this he's been that right you gave him not only did you give him like a a, a, a contract extension that was huge, mm-hmm. like it was a uh, was it four years, hundred twenty eight million mm. was a contract extension that you got him. That technically doesn't even kick in till next year. That's when the cap hit starts hitting thirty five plus million a year. And now you're in this situation where you don't even know if he's the answer to your quarterback. And you went up and got a quarterback right. in the second round. It was to me, it was premature for the GM to give him that contract extension. It was premature. Now, and I say this as an in totality of sports in general. Mm-hmm. Other example, Paul George. Yes, he's I think a four or five time All Star NBA All Star. Right, right. But he's been in the league for ten seasons, mm-hmm. and his reputation. Of when it hits playoff time, Paul George disappears. He becomes Houdini. Gone. <laughs> Go. Right. And the way that the Clippers rewarded him. Yeah, I understand. That. They, just gave him, they just gave him a four-year, $190 million extension for a guy that has consistently disappeared when it comes to playoff times. To me, that's a premature extension. It was – it's – is getting gun home. It right. to me is, is at this point you're just throwing anything at the wall hoping it sticks. Mm-hmm. At this point, when when GMs do stuff like this, it sets your franchise back. Right. It, it, you you already you with, with the Clippers. With the Clippers, yeah. you look at the, what you have. Although last year was very disappointing, but you still have a pretty decent team. So why would you handicap yourself with that money, giving him that kind of money for a a 10-year-old veteran who doesn't show up for the playoffs? And that's what I'm saying. It's premature. Why why would you take that money? He's like, my man, I hit the lottery. I got my money. I was gone. (laughs) 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 That's how he be with the playoffs card. I'm just just trying to – I'm. I'm throwing this out there because I'm trying to see how it makes sense. I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but I think I got enough intelligence and common sense to know when the dots are not connecting. You have a guy in Carson Wentz that, yes, he may have all the talent in the world, Mm -hmm. but what has he done and proven that he was worth that extension? You have a guy in Paul George that disappears habitually when it comes to playoff time. I don't care what you do in a regular season. Good for you. you. But when when, when, when when the shit matters, Right, when it matters, mm-hmm. because we we both play sports, we know when when it really is go time. Right, playoffs is go time. Right, it's championship time. Right, and if I can't count on you, then what the fuck you here for? What exactly is your purpose on my roster for if you don't show up when it matters? Mm-hmm. So when you got cats like Carson Wentz and and, and mm-hmm. Paul Joyce, and the list can go on and on mm-hmm. about players receiving these. I don't want to say undeserving because mm-hmm. if, they, if they got the money, then so be it. If the the franchise deems them that they deserved it, then cool. I'm just saying as a fan, and I'm looking at your play, mm-hmm. especially when it matters, and you are nowhere to be found. You you haven't really 
played well enough to be given this extension. Right. But what exactly is the reason to justify them getting that kind of money? You know what I'm saying? Now, LeBron just signed another extension this year, and but LeBron has done any and everything to prove that he's worth every damn penny that goes into his bank account. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, Patrick Mahomes has done everything and anything to prove that he's worth half a billion dollars to get that contract. Right. You know, um, are you talking about two? We're well, going. But even in, in Deshaun Watson's case, I mean, I feel like he's he's done a gone above and beyond to prove that he's earned that contract extension. Mm -hmm. Um I mean the list goes on. Right. I mean, uh Ansel Takupo just signed his max mm -hmm. deal today. Um, but he's backed up with an MVP. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I mean give or take whether what pieces he has around him, if that means anything, you know. I'm not, I'm not gonna say Ante Kukupo disappears in the playoffs, but right. I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily think he has enough help around him. But that's not here or there. Mm -hmm. I digress. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying is people that's getting this big money, and as a fan, you can sit here and look and be like, you know what? That that man earned that pennies, right? Every last one of them, right? But when you got cats like these cats, they Carson Wentz, to me, in my opinion, hasn't deserved not a damn thing to get that extension mm -hmm. and then you got paul george pg literally it, it i can understand if it was a one-time playoff appearance right. that he just disappears but when was the last time anybody's heard of, of paul george actually having a decent playoff appearance i'll wait because i mean but what what justifies yeah, I'll I'll wait. I'm, I'm waiting. Anybody in the comments? Anybody in the out there? <laughs> and so, so when you, to me as a GM, mm -hmm. and I'm not a GM, but I know if I was one, right. let, where's where's your body of work? Where's your evidence? Where's where where's the, uh, your your production that says that you are warrant right. this money? Because in my opinion, the Eagles didn't have to give. Carson wins that extension. They didn't have to. I, I, I don't understand it from this standpoint. Uh, first with the Eagles. You look at Carson Wentz. He gets injured. Foles come in. No, <laughs> not, not just once. More than once. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get to that. Foles playing the Super Bowl. <laughs> Next year he comes back. He get injured. Josh McCown come in. Old man. Mm -hmm. Old man. Old man. Comes in. And old man too. Right. And almost, you know, almost win it. Do you come back? You know, the um, following year, you do, you do well, but you still ain't, you know, take them to the big dance. Then you come back the year after that. What well, a year prior to that, getting ready to go into the two two thousand twenty season, they decide to get a quarterback. That's what made it confusing to me. So it's like you pay them this money. But then you pick up a quarterback in the second round. In the second round, and that, you know what I'm saying? Why you do that? How's that? Make I'm, sense? I'm, gonna say this. I'm gonna say this real quick. Anytime you get a quarterback in the first or second round, to me, mm. that says that the quarterback I have in the building, I don't have confidence in. I don't trust you. Right. I don't trust you as my starting quarterback. Right. And here's a kicker to me. And I think Doug Peterson needs to take some of his blame as well. Mm -hmm. And I said it last time. You letting Carson Wentz play like this for literally 12 games. Right. And and throughout those whole 12 games, your team was in the chance to be in the playoff race right. and the chance to get, to get that division crown. Mm -hmm. And you chose to ignore the, the absolute flaws that he kept putting on tape. Mm-hmm. So I, I was just confused on that. And so when now you owe this motherfucker all this money and you for certain don't even know if he he's the guy. Because yeah. if he was the guy, he'd be starting. He'd be starting. But he's not. He, be, he's getting about Jalen Hurts. Yeah. 
Damn. If I'm doing them, I'm I'm telling you, like I said, hey Indy, hey y'all y'all like waste money on quarterbacks. Can okay. y'all come to hey, you? Come get like, Jack. Say, come get this nigga and the yeah. Brooklyn Bridge. Yeah, you know I get rid. Of yeah, I understand that. But Damn. um, the other thing I wanted to bring on it's gonna be brief, really, really brief. I've been watching the sports circuit. And you know, everybody's talking about Cleveland. Oh man, look Cleveland, they're looking good. They're looking good. You know. Right. And you know, they talk especially during the last game they just played with Baltimore. Well, I just want to raise this question and and you tell me what you think. Is it is it more of speaking to Cleveland's greatness? Or more speaking to Baltimore's weakness. You talking about that last night game? Last night game. Um, I, I look at, I'm, 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 I'm um, drop a few things in there. You look at Baltimore's play this year. You know they struggled, they struggled some games. Inconsistent. Yeah, they've been very inconsistent. You know, especially for them to be touted as a great a defense, playoff. yeah, and a playoff contender. Super Bowl contender. Super, I'm sorry, yeah, Super Bowl contender. You yeah, know, they. There's some games that I saw when they play. You like, oh wow, hold on, wait a minute. They getting gashed. Hold on, they getting passed on. Hey, you know this is happening. This is ha- that's happening. You know, so is that really Cleveland, or is it is it just the team they play is just an inconsistent team? Now, I don't want to take nothing away from Cleveland because Cleveland did play a good game. They played a good game. Yeah. Um. You know, but as like I always say, and you got Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt back there, you you always gonna have you know a chance to win, yeah. especially they running like that, man. You know, yeah. and and Kareem Hunt ca- catching out the backfield, Nick Chubb caught a cup off the backfield. Yeah. I mean, it's been times when I, when they been running, and they they get stopped for eight, and you look up, oh, they push their way on through and get the other two yards. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's tough forward. running. You know, you got something like that where your running back can get you extra two, three yards after the catch or, uh, you know, or, or on a run. You know, that's 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 going to be beef up your play action. That's going to beef up your passing game because now people say, you know, you you a defense, especially your defense. No, supposed to be we got a good defense. We can stop the run. We can stop the pass. And then you got his back coming in. He pushing all around like a schoolyard bully. Mm-hmm. He's gonna be like, oh, we're gonna stack this box right here. We ain't, we ain't gonna do that again. Play action, hit him downfield. You know what I'm saying? So those things work. It's, you know, those things work. And I think any quarter, I'm not gonna say any quarterback, but a, a decent quarterback should be able to win those kind of games. And we're gonna always bring this up. Trent Dilfer won the Super Bowl. Got a Super Bowl behind the Hall of Fame defense. You know what I'm saying? So. That that shows you that you don't have to be a Elway, uh, Pat Mahomes, Dan Marino. You don't have to be those type of quarterback. You got to be able to manage the game. So going back to my original point, is Cleveland a good team, or is it uh, you know, is it um, you know, the team they're playing? And I I was gonna look it up. I get a chance to to see all their wins and who they won against. You know how they won. I really want to study that. Maybe I do that this so weekend. Wins of what they done this year? Yeah, like the wins and how they played. Well, I mean, you you saw the game when, when me and you and Lex was watching when they played Washington this this year. That was the beginning of the year. Yeah, but here's my point. Mm-hmm. They was doing kind of the same things early in the year that they was doing this uh, later in the year. Mm-hmm. Um, Washington pretty much was playing that, that game pretty close and pretty tough. Right. And until literally that Kareem Hunt, Nick Chubb were just literally running that defense down. Right, right. It took damn near to the third end of the third, fourth quarter for that defense to be like, hey man, we can't keep tackling these two some bitches like this. Right. We can't we can't <laughs> get just get gas like this. So Here's the thing about Cleveland. They've managed to understand what they do best, which is run the ball. Right. 
and try to get Baker on the play action mm-hmm. predicated off the run. Right. So that's the formula. We know this. My thing is, is that if you can stop the run, which is a big if playing right. Cleveland, and you put the ball in Baker's hands, and I'm like I said earlier, I don't think Baker had a fantastic game last night. I mm-hmm. I feel that that offense literally was still carried on Kareem and Nick. Right, right. And they only asked Baker to make certain throws. Mm. But he still wasn't accurate like crazy. Barely right. completed, you know, completed 58% of his pass. All I'm saying is, is that when – I don't like to live in hypothetical, but say Baltimore <laughs> doesn't get all those injuries mm-hmm. on, the, on the back end of the defense last night. Mm-hmm. I don't think Cleveland's back in that game. Man. It's, it's and it's not it's not me being a hater. I swear, y'all. It's just I know when I see good quarterback play consistently, and and this is what my thing was with Baker and the Browns. Everybody jumping on that train because they got a finally got a quality win over Tennessee and they mm-hmm. Jumping up and joy like he like like he won like he won a playoff game and I'm like whoa 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 everybody realize what you're talking about yes Baker threw four TDs great but you know why it's because everybody knows what Cleveland is going to do we're going to put an eight man front on your box right. all day so just the fact that he made some couple of good throws off the play action and, and actually completed the passes and, and they called him and scored. Bravo, you did what you were supposed to do. But the problem is that I have with Baker, you do it one game a year. You've been in the league like three three years now and you was the number one pick. And I honestly didn't didn't see that. I mean, there was a gun hole in general manager and John Dory said, Baker Mayfield, all right, gotta I mean, get him. I mean, I wasn't that impressed with him in um, college, but that's just me. I wasn't either. But I mean, he's like playing like he is now, he's streaky, you know, and, you know, he has some good games. He's like, okay. Then he has some games like, oh, who, you know what I'm saying? So it's like he was, he was very streaky in college, so I wasn't impressed. I mean that might be my bias against him in the NFL too. I try not. I try not to look at it that way and look at it what I'm looking at. Mm-mm. But here's my meter. Mm-hmm. What what you do on a consistent basis, in my opinion, is what you do. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Consistently, Baker is inconsistent. <laughs> <laughs> so just because he got an announcement and had a fantastic game over over one quality win, right. he got one. Right. One quality win. Right. It took you damn near eleven weeks to get that one quality win. <laughs> Look, I. That's why I, I always say what I do about Cam is mm-hmm. because the proof is in the pudding. You show me what you do, Carson, uh, Carson Wentz. You show me what you do. I don't know why it took you twelve games to finally get benched. I don't know why. I saw what you've been doing the other twelve games. You, you know should have been benched up? eight games ago. Now you bring that up. You know what's a messed up thing about that? If Jalen Hurts wins out the division, you know, and you, hey, if he's gonna be looking, hey, like, you could have made that, you could have made that decision, years. right? Oh yeah, you could have made that decision a long time ago, and y'all have been a better place. Whole Hell, they place. may be winning that division right now, right? You, should, you you could be at a place where you could have clinched your division. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because they, they don't have a lot of wins in the other teams. If Jalen Hurts wins out, and honestly, even if the uh, the Eagles are in playoff contention or if they make it to the playoffs, I'm I, I don't want to necessarily say that they should fight him, but I would think about it. Because my thing is, is like, what is that? This is the same team. Mm-hmm. Just because you, it's the same trash office line that was. In front of uh, Carson Wentz, it's the right. same track O line that's in front of Jaden Hurts. Mm-hmm. It's the same play. I, I don't want to say same play calls because I don't. I don't want to say that Carson Wentz is or Jalen Hurts is better either or. Because right. I think they both kind of have same similar skill sets, mobility, mm-hmm. um, stuff like that. Being able to be mobile and escape and extend plays. I say I can I can I can say that Jalen Hurts might be a little bit more proficient at it with his feet. He might be more mobile. Mm-hmm. Yeah, athleticism. Okay, I'll give him that. But 
but you can't you can't sit here and knock NFL experience at all. So here's my thing with that situation. That's why I feel like Doug Peterson should take some of this blame is because what exactly what situation are you putting these guys in? You know what I'm saying? This is the same team. They, but we both saw a two totally different Philadelphia Eagles from the week before. Right. This was not the same Eagles team that was in Green Bay. Right. This is not the same Eagles team that's been on the field for the whole other 12 games. And then all of a sudden you make the quarterback switch and now now is it different? No. <laughs> you Doug Pearson has to take some of his blame, and you, you have to. So if they went out and Jalen Hurts gets him in the playoffs, mm-hmm. I I don't know for sure you fire him, but you got to be like, bro, what? It's got to at least be in the conversation. It has to. Yeah. Because you, you put the team in a real bad position when they could have easily be in a great position. Right, right, right. And that's why I say you can't be premature signing these cats and none of those kind of contracts when they ain't proven that they deserved it. There's no, there was no evidence that said Carson Wentz deserves. Yeah, especially his case. I mean, there's really no evidence in Carson Wentz. I mean, what has he shown you? What has he really shown you? He's been hurt most of the time. The last three years, he's basically been hurt. So what well, has he shown you? That's the only thing he shown. Hey, look, I'm not sure how to get hurt. But I'm I'm not I'm not downing Carson with skills, especially because I mean I'll be frank, I'll be honest. Before he got hurt in 2017, he was an MVP candidate. He was Mm -hmm. before he got hurt. But I can't live off those 13 games you had in 2017 and be that as my evidence on why you deserve an extension. I can't have that as my well. He was an MVP candidate before he went. (laughs) 2017. How many times are you gonna bring that up? Right. But what I, have you done? I would say this. My thing, and I said it earlier. My thing about Wentz is not skill set. More, it is more of a yes. That's it. The, it mental, is. the decisions he making, you know, the kind of decisions he making, the kind of um, bonehead things he's doing, and in the fact he won't take in consideration. I need to change. I need to adjust. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Since he won't do those type of things, that's what's making him a bad choice. Yeah. You know, and so, and if you consistently trying to do that, and you consistently keep doing that, why should I keep paying you? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Why I keep, and I have a quarterback here that may be able to take, especially, like I said, if he proves it, if uh, Hurts proves himself, why not go with Hurts? He younger. I mean, you know, the kicker about it was, mm-hmm. it's still. Doug Peterson still didn't even want to commit after the game whether Jalen Hurts was going to be the starter until late last night when he finally figured out, yeah, I'm going to go with Jalen Hurts. Right, right. So, like, what are you, what are you in question about? And that's what I'm saying. Like, as as much flack and heat I want to give to Carson Wentz, I got to get – you, Peterson, you got to share some of this responsibility for right, this because you, right. you allowed the play to continue. Mm. You allowed for him to keep making those mistakes. Right. You allowed it. Right. Like, like, at some point, you had to be like, all right, it's been – well, for me, to me, after after the third or fourth game, I'm like, yo, bro, you keep making the same mistakes, bro. Like, <laughs> what's up? What's good, man? What's good? What's really good? Hey, but see, but this is what separates the great coaches from, from the okay and the good coaches. Because I, I already know one coach in New England and be like, yo, bro, he ain't just going to keep turning his ball over. Right, and like I can understand if, if if Carson Wentz had like a little moment where he just had a couple of turnovers. You know, Carson Wentz has been leading the NFL in turnovers since damn near week one, and hey, I'm I'm talking about week one to literally till he got benched, right. leading the league in turnovers. Like that that's not a damn coincidence. That's not that's that's not a happenstance. That's that's not a fluke. And that's and I'm gonna say say the same thing about. Baker. That's why I wasn't going jumping up and down when he when he had a great passing game against Tennessee. Good for you, bro. I need to say that you're great. And that's why when we had no mercy on early in the season when it comes to Dak Prescott. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you, you got all the pass cards in the world. Good for you. But you're doing all that shit in garbage time. I need you to see <laughs> 
this team in the league. Go right. win some game. Right. You know what I'm saying? Look, people show you who they are, and you can't expect anything different from them just because they made one change and it happened one time. Right. One time occurrence. And that's why I say people get caught up in being in the moment, being in, in just that situation. Like, oh, look, Baker did it. He beat the Titans. Four touchdowns. Man, the Browns are going to be. Bro, when he. when So the Browns are going to make the playoffs. You're going to see the best of the best in the playoffs. Right. I'm not expecting much. I'm expecting a one and done, depending on the matchup. I mean, looking at the standings right now, it's not like they playing against because in my opinion, AFC is stronger than NFC. That's just my opinion. So you're 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 facing Kansas City, you're facing Pittsburgh, Buffalo, possibility they're gonna see Tennessee again. Um Cleveland is in the mix with Indianapolis and Miami. Mm-hmm. Tell me, tell tell me right now. Do you see Cleveland beating any one of those teams right now? There's a face in the playoffs right now. Nope. That'll be a negative. That's my point. There's people can't get caught up in the in the emotions of one situation when I have a body of evidence that shows different. Mm-hmm. Period. That's just what it is. When females get mad at, oh man, I keep getting cheated on by this motherfucker. <laughs> Well, I mean, stop fucking with the cheating ass motherfuckers. Obviously, you got a certain it's type. Not that simple. It's not that simple. <laughs> but you, no, you messing I, with my game, nigga. It ain't that simple. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, it's just kind of like, opinion of this nigga. <laughs> I'm saying, you know, females like I can't find a good man, a good man. Well, I mean, you know, if you stop trying to take other women's mans and stop finding your mans in the club, you might find a decent man. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm just saying, mm-hmm. you can't expect something different when people have shown you what they are. Period. Right. 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 Every person, every quarterback that I have brought up. I've said something and I've been consistent with it because they keep proving it to me. Mm-hmm. Cam Newton will never be a proficient passer. You know why? Because he's proven it. Right. Baker Mayfield, Baker Mayfield is a consistent quarterback. You know why? Because he keeps proving it. Right. Carson Wentz ain't a consistent quarterback. You know why? Because he keeps proving it. People give you the proof of who they are no matter what, and you can't be a prisoner of the moment because it's something different for one time. Is it? I agree, bro. <laughs> well, I think you got. Say it with your chest, little ass nigga. <laughs> you got that off your chest. <laughs> hey, that's just how it is. Hey, but hey, show uh, everybody out there in the world. That's gonna be our show today, right? So, got and got and got to hear what me and Mel, what we like, what we hate mm-hmm. about week fourteen. Mm-hmm. And got our picks for week 15. Right, 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 right. Y'all heard us go ahead and vent and get some shit off our chest. <laughs> <laughs> um, so man, we're getting to the nitty gritty of the NFL, man. So we got about three more weeks and then we got playoffs. So we probably got another month, month or so to talk, month and a half, talk about a little bit more football. But um, if you're out there in the world, y'all see the numbers scrolling on the bottom. That number is there for y'all. Call in. Right. Jump on the line. Drop your opinion. Say what you got to say about NFL sports or anything sports related. Anything sports related. Well, now that he brought that out, I don't. I want to say sports show, right? So I was gonna say that, yeah, yeah. We are, anything. We we started off with football <laughs> because that's both for our passion. Well, we like sports yeah. in general. And in so general, what we're gonna we're trying to do is make this a total sports platform. So like, yeah. we talk about boxing. We even gonna talk about we might even bring some wrestling. Oh, because I've been in talks with some people, and some. Um, you, you just said boxing. I just want to real quick before we get up. I want to get the take on this Jake Paul situation. My man literally dropped the video and said, "I sent you Conor McGregor fifty million dollars to take the fight." Yeah, called him a pussy and all that. Dana White, you. Pussy. I'm talking about he talking cold cash shit. Mm-hmm. 
And he put up, not only did he talk cold cash shit, he's, all right. So the fact that he's a YouTuber and literally put 50 million on the line, that's, that's to me, that says a lot right there. Right. But then he talking that cold cash shit too. And you still, here's here's my thing. Here's my thing. A couple, I'm gonna make a couple points about that. One, McGregor ain't no punk. No. You know what I'm saying? And he got him in what he got him he got him in size, you know, as far as you know, um Jake Paul's bigger than McGregor. Not saying McGregor yeah. couldn't beat him. I'm saying he has that advantage. He do. Why don't you try to talk that mess to Earl Spence? Come on now, you know better. I'm just saying, you know, talk to him in your weight class. It's because he knows better. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You're just running your mouth. Um, hey, first of all, first of all, I I saw what Errol Spence just did to Danny Garcia, and Danny Garcia ain't no, no slouch. Well, I'm just, I mean, that, that's my point. It's like, you know, you out here trying to, you know, clout chasing. You know, you, you've been fighting for three years. You know, you fought Nate Robinson. Nate Robinson never boxed. Never. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and now you talking about Conor McGregor, who is, who you bigger than. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But already got the advantage. Already got the advantage. Not the now nah, now. Nah. Conor McGregor. I'm not, saying, not, not no the better now. Just, ain't no punk now. Physical. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it ain't gonna be no easy fight for you either. Ain't gonna be he's not gonna be Nate Robinson, put it that way. Oh no. You know what I'm saying? He's oh, not gonna no. be Nate Robinson. Um But hey, but you, my put, thing is, see you him, put fifty million on the line? See him in the octagon. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You oh, no, 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 no. Hey, Jay, Jay, Jay. <laughs> hey, keep keep it in the box for me, bro. You, you bet. I'm telling you this. <laughs> you best not see him in that gun. Oh, you, you see him in that gun. Best <laughs> not. Look, it's easy for anybody in the world to talk junk in the world. Right. You don't ever challenge Mike Tyson to a boxing match. You don't ever challenge Mike Jordan to a one-on-one match. You don't ever look. You don't. Mm-mm. You Jay, don't need those problems in your life, bruh. Jay, keep it in the boxing ring, bruh. Right. I know you got all the confidence in the world that you can probably beat Conor McGregor in a boxing match. Just hands. Don't. You better not take it to the cage. I don't care how much. Hey, here's my thing. If I'm Conor McGregor, I take this boxing match mm-hmm. for fifty million. The right. reason why I take this boxing match for fifty million, he would never make fifty million in the UFC. Never. UFC fighters can make some good money. Most, the biggest purse they might get, a couple of million, mm-hmm. few million. Right. This is if that, if he that decent put, purse with the um Flo- on, on Floyd fight. Yeah, but that was a boxing match. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I'll take it too. <laughs> oh, 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 trust. He got a nice little little chump of change yeah, for I'll that match. Too. Oh yeah, bro. Hey, Jake Paul, offer me that fifty million. I mean, I ain't the most proficient boxer. I didn't have my fights back in the days. So you offer me fifty million, we, we set it up right that's now. Nice, that's a nice little lick. Felt really you know good. Man? Give me some time to get in shape. Yeah, I'll do it. Hell yeah. No, I got a mouthpiece too. I know how to sell some shit, right. talk some shit. Any of you hate rappers to me. I be fifty million richer. Wow. I can say all the memes y'all want. I be like, hey, hey, I'm making it rain, nigga. I'm making it rain. <laughs> I'd be like, hey, ain't ain't you the joker that Jake Paul locked up? I said, like, yeah. I said and, and when I woke up, I had fifty in my pocket. When you woke up, you were still broke. <laughs> hey, I'll be counting my money right in front of you. Yeah, I got well, my doubt. Like, right. <laughs> That's a difference between me and you. When I woke up, I had fifty million. When you woke up. You, you, you were still, still broke. broke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, we're uh, yeah, cause, cause we could go, we could go on talk to here for help. But look, like I said, the numbers on the bottom. Call in. Call we in. love that. Yeah, we please we, t- talk. Please call junk. in. Rep, hey, rep hey, your hey. team. Rep your team. Talk you know your shit. And if you if you yeah. shout on the phone, shoot, get in the comments. Yeah, you know we we'll shout y'all in the comments. Just let's just make this an interactive sports station because, like I said, we're trying to be ESPN online. Mm-hmm. Starting off small, but I'm gonna try to get some um some um soccer on here or football. Yeah, you know, football. I'm gonna try to talk to some people that's into soccer. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not into soccer. 
You know, you know what? I ain't gonna lie. I watch it when it comes about uh, World Cup time because that should be getting exciting. Like as I hell. said, I'm not in the soccer, so I let y'all have that. Yeah, um, hockey. I used to watch hockey when the Red Wings were good. Watch it. I should watch it. I watch it, and I watch the playoffs and stuff like that. And the Red Wings. And hey, I haven't don't, it. Ain't nobody knock me. Mm-hmm. Don't nobody knock me. I'm. <laughs> I I usually watch the Stanley Cup playoffs over the NBA playoffs. Okay. That's, just, I mean, hey. that's just me. Hey. I just think they, they 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 got more heart and balls in that. To, <laughs> I used to watch tennis back when all when they had um, Boris Becker and McEnroe and all of them was in it. But I haven't watched tennis in a while. I mean, I watched the highlights, but I haven't really watched it. But oh, I, oh, I, I definitely watched tennis with Serena playing. See, that's a whole different that's a whole different thing. But um, especially when she's wearing that cat suit doll. <laughs> hold on a second. It's something on the screen. <laughs> but yeah, I, uh, you know, what I'm saying I want to, I want to, we, uh, well, we want to get to the point where this is like an interactive sports program, yeah. and you know, I, I, I'm gonna bring all sports in. That's how I am. I love anything that you're gonna compete in. I yeah, want to talk about it because you know we too competitive. My right. joke is on this. And like you know, you introduce it to me, I watch it. Yeah, you know, well, I at least talk about it. You know, so yeah, so I just wanted to say that. And before we sign off, and I missed it earlier. I want to mention it again. Tune in to mm-hmm. "You Don't Have to Be Stupid" podcast by my daughter and a couple of her friends. It's on Spotify. Yeah, yes. So um, I just got to listen to two episodes, and you know, they starting off. They need to you know they're gonna build up their equipment and stuff and get a little bit better. But the conversation. Man, they had me cracking up the whole time. Hey, look, Funny. just in case, just in case nobody has ever seen Jazz work, she has been on numerous of yeah, our situation right. I also wanted yeah. podcast. So that's yeah. dope to hear that Jazz is mm-hmm. doing her thing. Uh, Big bro, send me that link so I can I can peep it out myself. Okay. I, I love I would love to show support for Jazz because okay. she's always been very supportive of what we do. Right, right. So. Um, you know, I would love to reciprocate that as well. But hey, go check her out. Um, catch me at Mad Max right. M-A- M-A-C-S dot net. Mm-hmm. Catch your mail at Bonfire slash J Edwin Collection. You can catch our other co hosts, uh, Lex J Bubble Sweets. and Millie J Sweet Treats. Right. Um, go to IOftenWonder19.com. Right. That's where you find out all check our out. information, IOW Sports, and our sister network. I often wonder. Uh, go ahead, let, uh, mail last few words before we jump about here. I want to shout out a few people that we gonna get out of here. I want to make sure I shout out our, um, I'll call him our partner, I guess, our brother Phil. Um, Big brother Phil, our, Philly our, Phil, our bot podcast, our bot, and Daddy Cooks, Daddy Cooks. Uh, shout out uh, L. Jeffrey Moore, mm-hmm. out in, um, sunny California, um, the Drop Mon. The drop on Chris Williams, <laughs> our boy Caleb up in Caleb the, uh, Connecticut. Connecticut. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we met, I mean, um, Pomone Ramey. I mm-hmm. mentioned some of these names that kind of get your juices wet for our 28 podcasts for 28, 28 days. days. You yes. know, we met a lot, a lot of good people on that, man. Mm-hmm. I'm excited about that. Um, I want y'all to tune in for that and then get tuned in for our 50 podcast, 50 states. As soon as uh, Big Bad Corona get out of here, you know what I'm saying? We're going to start traveling and we're going to do podcasts. Some ever will be remote podcasts. And then, um, you know, some other things that's in the works. Um, IW, like I said, I said IOW Network. That's going to be um, something that's coming into play. We're going to have our own TV station. Get out of here. You're going to have our own, own TV station. Come on. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> say hi, Mackenzie. Hi, Mackenzie. No, you are Mackenzie. Say hi to the world. Hi. Oh, <laughs> But anyway, I'm through, man. I'm going to let you yeah. your family. I'm going to go hey, down here. Hey, this show is your family show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go down here and eat real quick. Uh-huh. I know. I'm about to cook up some tacos. Taco Tuesday. What's today? Food? What's today? Uh, Taco Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, tell them, baby. So it's Taco Tuesday. Um, after. Um, compile cauliflower. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah All right. All right, everybody. All right, world. world be good. Yeah.
Wild Card Mar, that nigga Mel, we signing off. It's ILW Sports. Y'all love somebody, hug somebody. Be good, world. All right, big bro. All right, bro. Holla. Yeah.